guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for a friendly, helpful worm composting community, you are in the right place. Today, we're going to have a discussion on how worm casts are the magic DIY soil additive. Can you think of any other product that does everything that worm compost can do? Put the comments below if you can. Today is Red Wiggler Day. It has been four weeks since we have looked in on the Red Wigglers in my worm factory. And hopefully we will get to harvest this top row. And as I take care of my little worm buddies, I'm going to go through how I make the magical soil additive and what all you can expect to see from its use. No, I did not say fertilizer. It is so much more than fertilizer. Now, I have this worm tower because that's what I'm using, but red wigglers and the other worms will live in any sort of thing that you want to put them in, from a plastic shoebox, to a tote, to a bus bin, to a mortar tray. It doesn't matter. They will still make you wonderful worm castings. Comment below. What do your worms live in? So, first of all, when you're making worm castings, the hardest part is to get the ecosystem up and running. And that doesn't mean just worms. So, although the worms are the superstars of the bin, the worms should not be alone in the ecosystem. So, we're going to try and harvest this off like we did last time. And then I will keep talking about worm castings and what are they good for. All right, so I'm just going to scrape these off the top here, put them over to the side. I am seeing a couple of worms and springtails. And that's totally normal. That's fine. I'm just going to, any worms I find, I'm going to put off to the side here. Now I'm going to end up putting this, uh, these castings on top of blue to dry out. So in the event that there are any sort of worms or cocoons, they will have an opportunity to hatch and go live in blue. And that's fine because they reproduce and double their population about every three months. So this population will not be hurt by the loss of a few worms. Okay, now I'm going to start the aggravation method where I fluff up all the castings. And hopefully this annoys the worms into going into the layer below. Okay. Okay, make sure they're good and aggravated and flatten them out. And then we'll come back when I can harvest some more. All right, here we go for round two takes about five or ten minutes to get the worms to all dive down again. And then you can come in here and skim off the top. And then you're, you're left with all the nice, beautiful castings. Okay, a little more aggravation. And flatten them out. I'm back in a few minutes. Okay, here we go again. Worms are doing a good job. Good worms. Going into the next level that we are going to feed here in a moment. I think we could probably just use with one more, one more do of getting these guys in there. I'm gonna try and put them in the middle. That way they don't try and hang out on the edges here. Because that's not easy. They can't get in. The very edge doesn't have holes in it, so... Get these little guys in the middle so they have some place to go. Alright guys, one more chance. Alright, here we go. I think we just about got it. Yeah, we got a few few stragglers, that's okay. Blue always could use more uh, red wigglers, I guess. Or I could put these in the layer that I'm going to work on here in a minute. Alright, so that took me probably 20 minutes to get all the castings out and most of the worms so that this tray can be used again. A little worm quake there. So this is the next layer down that was the feeding layer. And you can see the pineapple leaves are still in there. But this is now going to become 
the pre-harvest layer and is going to go to the top. So these guys here have had their last food feeding. And as I'm just going to kind of pick this up and hopefully you can see. But getting the, um, the ecosystem going in these worm bins is the hardest part. It takes about six months and then you'll have your pot worms and your all your little mites and springtails and everything else, isopods maybe, depending on your area, for what you need to get your ecosystem going so that they can make the most out of all of the food and bedding that you feed them. The second thing is the food itself, right? So I feed them whatever my family eats as far as food goes. They get whatever people food we eat, and then they will get shredded up boxes from, you know, whatever comes in the mail and um, some office paper. I try not to do junk mail anymore because the, the windows and the envelopes, example A, are hard to get out of the shredder. And um, so I don't do that anymore, but uh, for the most part, any food boxes, um, those are all fine to give the worms. Now it looks like all they've got right now is this pineapple. I don't see any evidence of the banana or the apple even. I'm pretty surprised about that apple being gone. And the oranges, I see none of that in here right now. So to keep these guys rolling until we get in here again, I'm gonna give this layer some of the worm chow. And as we saw last time, the worm chow, even though it's more like uh, salt or sugar granule size, it still managed to get eaten up. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's plastic. We're gonna take that out. Okay, so this is gonna become the pre-harvest layer and this will be on the tippy top of the system. Let me go get the next layer down. And then we can talk about the rest of the things that worm castings do for you and your garden. All right, so here we are below where we had fed last time. You can see there's grit in here and paper and it is pretty moist. Now I did go ahead and water this. Um, because the furnace had been going nonstop, I really did not believe that um, this was gonna stay good enough. So I did put probably about a half a gallon or two liters of water in here. So that that is uh, where we're at right now. But this is the layer that is going to get fed. So today this layer is going to get some pretty stinky food. So let me uh, kind of dig a little hole here and they are going to get some broccoli slaw and unfortunately it's one of those things it got itself to the back of the refrigerator and froze and uh, I personally don't like to eat it after that point so it uh, became worm food. But never fear, it will be recycled into the nutrients that the worms and the other critters need to make me some worm castings. Let's give them a little bit of worm chow too. Something for them to eat right away. I'm not sure how available that broccoli slaw is. So we'll just give them a little bit of something that's uh, more readily available. Go ahead and cover that up. And that is our feeding tray. So this will become the active feeding tray until the tray above it looks like it's ready to be harvested. So I do have a video where I show you how I apply this to my garden. I will go ahead and link that above and that will show you many of the benefits that the worm castings have, but I will go ahead and highlight them right here. What I find particularly useful about the worm castings is that they are a little bit of a fertilizer, right? So. It's not, it's not like a 10, 10, 10. It is more like a 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, but it's very gentle and you can use worm castings on anything from seedlings to bonsais to anything else and it will never burn your plants. So that is a big benefit as far as I'm concerned. And then additionally, one of the things we don't really think about is that all the microbes in here that went through the gut of the worm now, when they get in the real soil outside in my garden, they are actually going to be capable of breaking down the soil itself and releasing more nutrients. So even though there's not a lot of available NPK, in the worm castings here, the microbes that come from this 
will be able to make things available for the plants in your garden. Okay, let's look down at the next layer down. All right, so this layer, although it is getting more damp, I don't know if, I think I should probably add just a little bit more water to this because it's not the bottom, bottom tray. I don't know if you can hear in the background, but the furnace has kicked on again. It's kind of continuous, quite honestly. So another thing about worm castings here, and anybody who's got a worm farm can tell you that they will stick together if they get too far done and digested. But what the worms do is the mucus that goes through the body with the food that they eat actually helps hold the soil together into something called an aggregate. And so when you have soil that either lets the water run right through it or pools off, it basically is missing some of these things. So what the worm castings do is they kind of help stick all of the uh, soil together so that it can hold the moisture and not let it run off or run through. And as I'm playing with the castings, I'm finding all the little baby worms that can go live <laughs> in this layer here. Apparently I missed them. So really what I'm trying to say is that when the worms get into, when the worm castings and all the microbes get into the soil itself, you're taking dead dirt that is devoid of life in many cases when you start a garden and they're going to turn it into soil. Now we're not talking about invasive species today. I, it's unfortunate. I know all about that, but these are red wigglers. These are native to my area as are several of the type of worms that I have. So I don't have any invasive worms and I also live in a Northern climate. So I know that a lot of people are like, oh God, no, they're gonna breed in your garden and, and take over the universe. Uh, you can't unring the bell, unfortunately. And the, the castings themselves will have cocoons in it, but I have raised beds and I live in a suburban area. If I lived close to a, um, you know, like a forest or something like that, maybe I might treat things differently. Um, but uh, I'm not really going to address that here. Okay, so like I said, it will turn just yield dirt that, you know, subsoil that new houses are built on. And this is why you don't shred envelopes. I'm going to be picking some, somewhere in the paper that I have been given, uh, there were envelopes shredded and I'm going to be picking out plastic windows for a year probably, lovely. So, anywho, back to the worms. So what we're gonna do here is, these castings are going to turn my garden so soil into something that is alive, that will feed my plants, and not only feed the plants, but also they are going to overpopulate, not overpopulate, the microbes that are in here are going to outcompete some of the disease organisms, so that you won't have bad things like powdery mildew. And I can't say you won't be completely completely without it, but what I will say that if you spray casting tea on your plants like zucchini and pumpkin and grapes, it actually kind of protects the plant itself. And I, I don't know the mechanism. If you do, please put that below as to why certain things don't like to eat plants that have worm castings on them. I don't know if it's because it covers it up and they can't smell it or if it makes it unpalatable. I'm not sure, but what I can tell you is when I started using worm castings, even the dreaded Japanese beetles who were the bane of my existence no longer turn my uh, plants into leaf uh, lace. Uh, they, they will nibble a few little leaves that maybe I didn't get treated and they leave the rest alone. So that is why that is the primary reason that I think that it is worth its weight in gold. So let me go get the last tray and maybe we'll get that a little bit of moisture and we'll reassemble it and finish up here. Here is the very bottom tray. Now I, these worms were in the sump, so I just picked them up and moved them. And I am gonna just continue breaking my own rules and putting a little bit of water in here because there are worms in there. This is supposed to stay sort of dry and soak up all the juices from the food that gets released. But right now it is so dry in the basement, it's 40% humidity down here. And so I think it is just sucking the moisture out of everything. So 
I'm going to go ahead and give this bottom tray some water. But it is, uh, for the most part, pretty dry. Just give it a little competitive edge there to try and help it out some. If you liked this discussion on my worm bin with red wigglers, or what worm castings can do for you, I have a playlist that I will put right over here. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video right over here. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.